to whom they have no responsibility, legal or otherwise, to give them a dividend ever. Okay, Professor, do you believe that a dividend... So there's a... So here, here's the slippery... Here's the slipperiness. Yeah, he's slipping. He says they don't have a legal requirement to give you a dividend, mm -hmm. which is true, mm -hmm. but they do have a legal requirement uh, to their shareholders. Yeah. To try to give them a return in investment, investment whether that be yeah. a dividend or whatever else that would be. Increased stock price. Right. Yeah, they can't just they can't just like start selling the fucking private assets of the company and leave like an empty building. Right. Yeah. They can and then they get fucked. They get sued into oblivion. That's that's happened before and, yeah. and they Enron. get in trouble. Yeah. Exactly. Enron. Given it is the only way that you can return capital to shareholders. That's not the point. That absolutely that, is the point. You made no, you made the point. What is the company responsible for? The company is responsible to run the company. They are not responsible to give money back, whether it's dividend, return of capital, or any other way to the people who give them the money to buy shares. Okay, so this is where the point where I'm like, wait a minute. At first I thought he was just being sneaky, fixating on Destiny saying the word dividend, but he just said a company is only responsibility is to run a company and they have no responsibility whatsoever to the investors. Mm -hmm. That is so not fucking true. Yeah, so not how is true. he how is this guy an economics professor? What I is he fucking no talking about? That's so no not true. Economies run on sales too. And he gives him he he doesn't give himself an out here. Stability, legal or otherwise. Of the, you know. Most of the most dynamic companies in this country are selling stock to people to whom they have no responsibility, legal or otherwise, to give them a dividend ever. Well, no dividend. Okay, but... Professor, no dividend. do you believe that a dividend is the only way that you can return capital to shareholders? That's not the point. That absolutely that, is the point. You made No, you made the point. What is the company responsible for? The company is responsible to run the company. They are not responsible to give money back, whether it's dividend, return of capital, or any other way to the people who give them the money to buy shares. It, that's completely untrue. Mm -hmm. a, public, a publicly traded company 100% does have a legal requirement to this. Yeah. That's what it takes to get on the whole exchange. The Absolutely. people who give them the money are gambling. They hope that they can sell the shares for more, and they will sell the shares to anybody who can buy them. The company is not responsible to buy those shares. The company is not responsible for what price they can get. If they lose their shirt, tough luck. It's not an obligation or a responsible. That's the way the law of this country works for the stock market. And there's no- So now he's conflated, if you listen closely, he's saying, well, because you can lose, right? Mm -hmm. Because a company can not increase its stock price for whatever reason. Therefore, he's conflating that with saying that the company has no responsibility to try. Yeah, to, which to, is to, a huge difference. Right, which is a huge difference. He just yeah. snuck that right in there. No problem in a worker co-op saying to investors, we're going to grow better than what you can get from a capitalist enterprise. So buying a share of our stock will give you a better shot to sell it at a higher price later. And I can give you examples. And also, here's the thing, too. I just don't know how that's going to be. Like, I don't know. Like, if you're basing your... The stock price mm -hmm. is mostly based on earnings. Like, how... How, how do... It, like you would look at a co-op and you'd say, well, most of the earnings are going to go towards labor, <laughs> right? Well, yeah, but, and here's the thing too. It's not going to go to reinvestment in new technology or any of that good stuff. That's because sure. companies, companies want to make profit. They want to increase their shares, blah, 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 yeah. you know, for the investors and for themselves. Cause usually the CEOs, managers and board, they'll own like a fuck million shares in these companies yeah. too. So they're, they're increasing their own wealth. Um, so they, they want to generate as much profit as possible. Mm. Labor, how much do they pay their employees is a cost. Yes. Okay. That reduces from their profit. Yeah. And this is part of why companies want to continually expand and expand and expand, 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 because they want to increase their profit. Mm-hmm. 
if you're a co-op, you don't necessarily want to expand because the more you expand means you're actually giving up your market share money and voting potential of your company because expanding means oh you my need god more great point great point okay. yeah so you're diluting yourself you're diluting your de democratic power this is the same reason why people don't want immigration right and so with a co-op there's probably if like if we had a bunch of cups they would fit like just via experimentation it was you would emerge people would figure out over mm -hmm. time what would be the perfect level of expansion versus staying yeah. small like how much money you know extra money would you have to make to make right. expansion worth it where you would and make so, less money by expanding right you probably very often make less money by by expanding as a co-op yeah Depend. I mean, it's all be very highly subject, you know, highly not subjective, but high, you know, be so many variables here that calculate where with most capital run companies, private investor companies, it's just, you always want to expand, 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 unless it's going to, you know, fuck you up, but you always just want to expand. Um, so why would you invest in a co-op where it's not even clear whether they'd ever want to expand, whether they'd ever want to increase their profits and their profit potential versus a private company, which always wants to expand. Color commentary says a stock price rises and falls when people buy and sell the stock. Period. Yeah, but God, that's so simplistic. People buy and sell at certain prices based on earnings. So if you want to, if you want to have that mentality and not really ever <laughs> do any investing, go ahead and uh, keep that. I mean, game stock, <laughs> ga sorry, but I'm totally triggered. Game stock is like the perfect example, right? Ga game stock stock is not, is not the perfect example. This well, no, it's, 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 it's the example. It's an example that yes, stocks, stocks rise and fall based on supply and demand of uh, what people are willing to pay for them. All of that stuff. Yes. But in, right. a, in a normal rational market, most people are focused on, the, the 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 catalyst for a stock is earnings like a lot of traders trade well, around yet you have to look at earnings this way. periods okay yeah. it's true that technically at the end of the day and this is an important distinction mm -hmm. to remember that the only thing that really matters for stock prices is what people exactly. people want to buy yes. low and sell high that's true but you have to say okay well how do people make the decision on which stock they think is going to go up People yes. have to map that onto something else. Yeah, something tangible. And they're not going to just yes. yeah, they're not going to just close their eyes and just randomly point to something on on, on the you know the SCP and say I'm buying this thing. Okay, mm -hmm. you know, so one of the mechanisms that people or one of the uh, things that people kind of trick themselves into being important, <laughs> maybe mm -hmm. if you want to conceptualize it that way, as how to judge whether the stock price is going to go up is based on you know. Uh, earnings, earnings but profit, it, cetera, I mean, I don't, it is a good metric though. I don't, how can you say they trick themselves into that metric? I mean, that metric's based on how many cars are sold, how many iPhones are sold, how many, whatever they're, how many widgets are sold. I mean, because it doesn't, if sales are declining, you know, that company, because at the end of the day, it's are declining. Why I'm saying tricking is because it's like when you buy stock, mm -hmm. you're not giving the company any money. Mm -hmm. Okay. It doesn't really have anything to do. And this is and, and no, you're, buy, make, you're, you're buying it from somebody else. Someone is selling the stock. Yeah, exactly. Right. The you're, only time the company gets money is when they uh, issue the shares the first time. The reason why, but they do, they issue new shares at usually the price of their stock and dilute. Right. Share. Th that's true. If they yeah. issue new shares, then yes, they do. But this is why this is why companies want to keep their stock price up is so they can issue new shares if they need to raise capital, but it dilutes. Right. True. It, dilutes and obviously you don't want to be diluted as a shareholder but right it depends upon if the stock's going gangbusters or not. right well and also it's because you know as, as i said the ceo and the board and all these people they all own a bunch of shares yeah. so they have their own uh interests in which they want to keep the shares upon. yeah and but here's the thing wolf could make all sorts of arguments about i think he can make all sorts of valid arguments about how publicly traded companies actually hurt efficiency for these companies and actually make these companies worse. I think you can make tons of arguments about sure. that, but he's not, he's not making any of those no. arguments. He's saying people would be just as interested 
in buying stock in co-ops to with private right. companies, which makes absolutely no sense. Because if Wolf's authoritarian government would put all of their businesses out of business, and you which would only, I guess that's yeah, I guess you would you only know, have they, co-ops to choose from. So if they're the only game in town, sure. My God. I, no, no, no. No, I, we don't need examples. I'm going to give you an example of a company that did that, just so you can see why an investor would do it. I mean, really, you can make the theater. And this is, this is, <laughs> I totally agree with Destiny, this theater, because this is what Wolf wants to do. He wants to say, you know, I found this one outlier and therefore right. it makes the rule. No. Right. No. You moron. <laughs> no. Just because you found one guy who is stupid enough to buy a fucking co-op stock doesn't mean people are going to be interested in it. Your hand in, on your face. I'm not making the problem is you're just you said something that's just so on its face absurdly incorrect about the characterization of U.S. capital markets. You, do you not agree that there exists a legally binding the SEC literally regulates fiduciary responsibilities to investors? I don't like this trick you've pulled. Let me finish, please. Oh, let wrong. me finish. You, let me finish. Let me finish. You've made it sound as though I believe the only way to return capital to shareholders is through dividends. That's absolutely not the case. That's oh, one reading of it. You can return it via stock buybacks. You can return it uh, via right. increase but in you're growth. You're not obligated company. to do any of that. You're you not have, obligated you to have do a any fiduciary of that. responsibility to your shareholders. Of course if you, you do. If you read, if you take my advice, I teach these courses. If you read what fiduciary responsibility means, it's an abstract generalization. It can be oh God. easily. God, different. I hope if you've taken a class from Richard Wolf, I hope they never give you debt relief for fucking for uh, for student debt. Look. If you read the law, yeah. you could interpret no. it that no. maybe I'm right if I look at it in a certain perspective. And if you're <laughs> if you're taking classes from Richard Wolf, I hope you have a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar like student loan debt that follows you around for the rest of your life. I hope that albatross is around your neck forever. Demonstrated in thousands of legal cases that there is no obligation of any material sort that they return money to the people who invest in them. It ah, see, there's the trick. Oh, he's doing a little slip in a premise? Okay. It's true that no company has a responsibility to mm -hmm. return money because they can fail. Yeah, of course they can fail. Everyone yeah. knows that. But, they're, but they do have responsibility to try. <laughs> okay? Yeah, they do. They, they, exactly. Okay. That's what fiduciary responsibility fucking means. Yeah. This is like saying the baseball team doesn't have any responsibility to win the game. No, there's a huge difference between winning the game and not fucking trying, right. walking out on the field and throwing their gloves up in the air and say, we lost. It's a good thing we bet on the other team. Yeah, exactly. That's We're a rich. perfect example. That's a perfect example. The baseball team has an obligation to try to fucking win. Okay, yes. they can't just say, whoops, we just lost. Whoa. Yeah. Let me go talk to my oh bookie. My God. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, that's basically what happened at Enron. Fucking right. Perfectly okay to run your business as you think it should best be done, short of uh, committing fraud or illegal activity, and that would apply in any system. The investor is taking a chance, buying your shares in the hopes of selling them at a higher price. It happens all the time, and it would be perfectly consistent with workers who run their own enterprises and are their own board of directors. See, the, the question Destiny really asked was, would people be interested in buying a co-op next to a conventional stock? And well, first, no, Wolf has not really answered that question. Yes. The first question is, how could you invest in a worker co-op? Because most people, when they say worker co-op, they mean that yeah. the workers own all the shares of the company. So now he's redefined that to mean, well, no, the workers can... Go to the stock Only manage market, the whole thing. Yeah, do they, they actually... IPO, all that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. Right. But they just don't give up any control. Over they won't the be company. diluting there. Right. So yeah. then, the, so then the question morphs into, okay, well, under that system, why would you ever, why would you ever invest in a co-op because they have no obligation to give you shit? And, and you know, his to, answer to increase is increase your investment. His answer is because you're stupid. <laughs> So his answer is, well, technically, no company has an, an interest or a responsibility to do that, which is flatly untrue. 